All right, now that we've graphed the basic cosecant and secant graphs, what we're going to do now is graph a couple of basic transformations. And uh, it's actually not that hard to do if we remember the relationship between cosecant and its reciprocal sign. So for instance, if we have to graph y equals 4 cosecant of 2x, the way I'd like, the, the, I think the best way to do it is first graph, and I want to write lightly graph, y equals 4 sine of 2x. And then once we have that picture in front of us, it will be very, very easy to, to, to get the cosecant graph. So how do we graph this? Well, we know that the amplitude is equal to 4. We know the period would be 2 pi over b, which would be 2 pi over 2 or pi, and so that means uh, that would be pi, uh, actually, I'm going to make that pi, because when I cut that in half, that would be pi over 2, cut that in half, pi over 4, pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, and the negatives over here. Okay, and the amplitude is 4, so let's see, make that 2, make this 4, make it all go up by, well actually, I'm going to put the 4 here just so it's more in the middle. Okay, and now I'm going to lightly graph, lightly graph sine. Now in fact, I don't really even need to graph all of it as long as I get the basic the basic shape. But you know what, I'm going to graph all of it that way, it's just cleaner, the process. So, there's our, our crutch, the sine graph. There we go. And <clears throat> to graph cosecant, it's really easy. Wherever their uh, sine is zero, there's an asymptote. And And wherever sine is 1, so it's cosecant. So that'll flip up. Then it'll flip down. And voila, we've got the graph of sine. I'm sorry. We've got the graph of cosecant. Two periods worth. But we're going to finish by erasing our crutch because remember that is not part of the cosecant graph. We put those in to help us graph it. So we got to erase the yellow. Good. So there's a, a appropriate or correct graph of cosecant. Let's do the the secant one. For this one, Well, rather than graph rather than graph secant directly, we're going to first graph y equals negative two cosine of pi x, and that is an amplitude of two 
in a period of 2 pi over pi, which is 2. So that would be a 2, 1, nope, 3 halves. One half, two halves, three halves. Yep. Negative two, negative one, negative one half. Okay, so I got the intervals good, and my amplitude is two, so we'll call this a two, and this a negative two. Now let's be thoughtful when we graph our cos cosine graph. Cosine normally starts here, but it's it has a negative two as a coefficient, so it's going to start here. And wherever cosine is zero, there are going to be vertical asymptotes for secant. And there'll be one at the same place but secant will be secant will be looking like this. All right. So notice again, if you can graph the basic sine and cosine graphs, then your ability to graph the secant and cosecant graphs is. Uh, is strong because the graphs of the secant and cosecant graphs, at least the way I try to explain them, uh, depend very much on their, we could, I, mean, I guess we could call them their parent functions in a, in a way, although I hesitate to use that because we used it in a different way before. But I use them as like the crutch, like graphing two, negative two cosecant of pi x is a crutch that helps us graph secant and cosecant. Okay, but we do erase them afterwards because they're not part of the graph. And so there we have it. We've got our graphs of negative 2 secant pi x and our graph of 4 cosecant 2x. Pretty painless as long as you can graph the appropriate reciprocals. Okay.